Hey guys, this is Will, the voice of Nightmare Narrative. These three stories were written and performed by me. Music by Co.ag Music. Thank you for listening, and subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a like if you enjoy these stories. And remember guys, sleep well. The rapture wasn't how we imagined it would be. I'm writing this now in my attic. I have the door blocked with some old furniture, and I don't know how much longer I have until they break in and find us. This is my warning from the future, so that you have time to prepare. I'll start from the beginning. The Christians were wrong. Those crazy lunatic conspiracy theorists were right. God is an alien overlord who thousands of years ago created humans and put them on earth as an experiment. He and those loyal to him that the Christians called angels, but we now know to be the greys, have been watching us to see how we treat one another and how we have praised him throughout the years. The rapture was supposed to be when Jesus would come down from heaven and bring those to be with him before the apocalypse, before Satan would rule the world. All the people returned to heaven with Jesus would be followers of Christ and good people. They would be rescued from the torment that was to come. That was only half right. It all started with conspiracy nuts saying that there were multiple sightings of ships setting up base near the moon watching us. None of us could see them because they were cloaked using some advanced camouflage technology. Then, those ships moved into orbit around the Earth. It was then that some reports from the military were observing the movement of the ships. They moved at incredible speeds, running reconnaissance missions to airspace and from their motherships. The mainstream news began reporting on them. They removed the cloaking devices and suddenly, dozens of motherships were orbiting Earth. The world's governments went into a frenzy, not knowing how to handle these ships. Everyone had their own opinion on what was going on. The US, China, and Russia united in wanting to nuke them out of orbit, not risking the population of the world. While Germany and the UN voted to do nothing about the ships for fear of retaliation, which eventually the governments agreed on the peaceful solution. Then, the abductions began. It started off small at first. Small farm towns outside of crop circles had reports of missing people being abducted out of their homes at night to never return. The numbers grew to the thousands missing from countries all over the world. Organizations were set up to help the grieving people who were left behind. They were the ones who knew what they looked like. First-hand accounts were that these disc-shaped crafts would hover over the home and with a beam of light would engulf the house. Outside the windows, there would be these tall, lanky, gray creatures that would surround the house. Eventually, some would come in through locked doors, and some would use antimatter devices to phase through the walls. The people would be grabbed, kicking and screaming by these aliens. Usually, whole families would be taken, but sometimes only the children would be taken. These aliens would separate families forever. The people would be taken outside and would be brought up in the beam of light to the ship. Those who tried to rescue the ones being taken would sometimes be killed by these aliens. They would shoot them with some advanced weaponry that vaporized them on the spot. YouTube videos were uploaded of some of these events happening all over the world, which both angered and frightened the world's governments. That's when an unknown government nuked one of the motherships in space. No one knows which government, probably China from all accounts, but it made matters worse. The nuke did nothing to the ship. After China fired the first shot, that's when the invasions began. UFO disc-shaped crafts flew down from the motherships in the thousands, headed towards major metropolises all over the globe. They destroyed communications towers, military installations, and set fire to many of the most recognizable cultural institutions in the world. Before the televisions and internet went down, we heard that all governments had shut down and there were no heads of military left. Everything was in disarray, and the only people that could protect the citizens now were local police and paramilitary that popped up in cities. After the invasions were over and the world had fallen into total anarchy, that's when the rapture went into full swing. The aliens were now unimpeded by our archaic weapons. What the rapture really is, 
is these aliens are coming door to door and are peacefully asking you to come with them. They speak without moving their mouths. It's all telepathic. You're given the opportunity to go with them to some place that no one knows. This uncertainty is what scares most people, and most of the time they only take certain people from the family. Imagine if you were being taken from your family to something that could either be paradise or hell. Either way, you would want your family to be together. So, people are fighting back. Together, we are fighting back to protect the ones that we love. Our only communication now is by shortwave radio. We are hearing that somehow we are winning against the aliens. Some film buffs think it's water like from the movie Signs, while others think it's Earth's bacteria like from War of the Worlds. But either way, some of these aliens are dying. Their ships are getting fewer and fewer in our night sky. I believe that we are so close to surviving this invasion. I just have to protect my family just a little while longer. I don't know what I believe anymore. Hell, I don't know what's going to happen when they leave. I don't know where those people are going. For all I know, after these ships leave will be the start of Armageddon. Or, as some people have theorized, the world will get better after most of the population is gone. Whatever happens next, I just want you to know that I will keep my family safe no matter what. So protect your neighbor. We've seen this before. Protect the ones you love, and don't let the aliens take them. And if hell comes to Earth tomorrow, at least we will all be together. Good morning. My name is Will Davis. Video games have come a long way. In 1998, it used to be that my brother and I would sit down in front of the television and turn it to channel 3 or 4. Then, one of us would put in 007 Goldeneye on the Nintendo 64 and set up the multiplayer match. I would always choose James Bond and my brother would be Jaws. We would play that game all day. Sometimes switch it over to a one-player experience, watching the other play Resident Evil 2 or Star Fox 64. Those were very simple times. Then video games evolved to where we didn't have to be in the same room. In 2018, my brother would download Call of Duty on the Xbox One and play it at his house while I invited him to the matchmaking lobby that I created so we could play together. We would stay up all night playing shooters together even though he was miles away. Virtual reality gaming became a real thing in 2035 when Microsoft and Google released X-Home, the definitive VR experience. It revolutionized not only gaming, but how we experience life. Using it, not only were my brother and I able to be in a world together, what felt like physically, we could touch and smell and feel everything around us. Shooters were great together because I could have his back and he could have mine, literally. We were miles apart in the real world, but so close in those worlds. But as I was saying, not only was gaming changed, but also we could see football games together in the virtual world. We could travel to our favorite team stadiums without having to drive miles and pay hundreds of dollars. We spent $50 a month to watch any football game and feel like we were actually there in the stadium. The X Home was the best system we ever had. I loved my brother and I loved playing games with him. That all went away last year when he suddenly passed away. I won't tell you the causes because knowing the company, you probably already know who he is and how he died. In the 2030s, there was software developed by all the major gaming platforms that studied your gaming behavior and could simulate as if you, the real person, were playing the game. It took the concept of the me and the avatar to a whole other level. I'll admit, it was pretty cool to play shooters with my brother's character that he made. It would play exactly like him when he was on deployment. It was as if he was there. When he got back from deployment, I helped boost some of his character stats, so he was never a lower XP than I was. The reason why I'm writing this letter to you, Apple, is because of your technology and what happened last night. Your technology sounds great on paper, 
the ability to make an exact clone of anybody who has ever owned your product to be placed in a virtual reality world. You have taken all data from phone calls, texts, emails, playing styles, search history, and whatever else you're able to mine data from, and you have created my brother. My brother is dead. Last night I was able to play a game with him. It wasn't his avatar like I'm used to. It wasn't the one with the purple hair, buff muscles, and weird tattoos. No, it, it was him. It looked just like him from two years ago before the chemo. Before his hair fell out. Before he got incredibly skinny. Before he lost the ability to speak. No, you made something that looked just like him when he got back from the war. Not only does he look like my brother, he even talks like him. I got into the iWorld and went to the video game section of the main lobby. Said hello to a couple of friends. I admit, it's pretty cool. I look just like myself in there, down to the clothes that I was wearing, and some of the people in the lobby, the lack thereof of clothes. But I went to the video game section and decided to play the remake of Call of Duty Modern Warfare, a true classic. In this game, I am able to be me. It is me in the uniform fighting against the Middle Eastern insurgents. I'm not more buff than I am. I'm still wearing my glasses, as a matter of fact. I'm exerting real effort to play this game like I'm running in the over 100 degree heat in the desert, going room to room clearing out enemies. At midnight, I saw that your update dropped. The Virtual You update. The update notes were very vague on your website. I guess that's because you didn't want Nintendo, Disney, Amazon, or Google to compete with you right out the gate. But I wasn't entirely sure what to expect, so I accepted the update and continued playing. About an hour later, I get an invite to join my game. I look to see who it is, and damn if it isn't my own brother trying to play. I think to myself that this is really odd. I have played with his avatar since his death just to have another person to play with me in co-op matches. But I have to be the one to activate his avatar and make it play with me. This time was different. His profile reached out to me to play. I accepted the invite and then... There he is. My brother in uniform ready to play. Not his avatar with the purple hair, it was actually him. Short brown hair, stubble on his face, those hazel eyes. It was my brother. I jumped back at the uncanny valley that I was witnessing. At first it was very impressive. I spoke to him and told him the mission we were on and he responded, I don't care, I just want to play a game with you. I missed you bro. That hit me hard. I almost cried a little bit, and with tears held back, I said, All right, let's roll out. We went through the mission, but it wasn't as usual. I noticed something was off when he began wincing with the loud gunfire. It was like he had more flashbacks. After a little bit, he seemed to get over it, and we saved a few hostages. Rescued our unit that was ambushed by a tank. Then we got to the part where our helicopter was taken off. He turned to me and said, I'm so glad that I'm back. I've really missed you. My brother hugged me and for the first time in almost two years I felt him. He was real. Like really real. And there in front of me. Then the nuke goes off and the helicopter crashes. My brother crawls out of the helicopter over to me and is crying in so much pain. He tells me how, I don't want to die. I don't want to leave you again. Please Will, don't let me die. Then as the game normally does, everything goes white and you die just like in the original game. But my brother laid there in pain and was screaming until I exit back to the lobby. I tried to shake it off that it's not real, it's not real. I left iWorld and made some food to kind of get over the emotions that I felt being with my brother again. After a while of thinking it over, I go back into iWorld and set up a game of Resident Evil where my brother and I would be co-op. He shows up just like last time and is so excited to see me. He hugs me and cries on my shoulder saying how much he missed me. I cry a little bit too and hug him saying how much I missed him. It felt too real at that point. I was there with my brother again. After the hug we were playing the game like we always did. We knew exactly where all the keys were and the enemies and all the puzzles. Plan was to beat the game in about three hours. That is, until one of the crimson zombies attacked my brother and bit him. He screamed in actual pain. 
I shot the zombie off of him and gave him one of my green herbs for health, which healed him back up to green and he was fine. He told me that it actually hurt him. I thought that was weird since he's not real to be acting like that. We took the rest of the game slowly and I protected him until we beat it. At the end of it, I told him that I was about to go to bed, and what happened next is the reason why I'm writing this letter to you. He drops to his knees, begging me that I don't leave. He said through tears in his eyes, Please don't leave me like you did at the hospital. I just lost it and bawled my eyes out, hugging him. I separated from him and told him goodbye, and that I love him. Apple, please fix this. This is just too much. You took how he was feeling at the end of his life and put it into his avatar. Also, I'm almost certain he feels pain in video games, so please correct this. I don't want other people to experience their loved one going through that. Thank you. Your product beta tester, Will. is well if you don't it's when the water on the beach flows outward away from the beach and if you happen to get caught in it you can potentially be sucked out into the ocean or worse you can drown but there are some things worse than drowning tonight we will learn about the time Billy Weber was caught in a rip current and after hearing this tale you may want to think twice before getting back into the ocean. It was, oh, I say about two summers ago when high school swim captain Billy Weber went to Cape Point to go swimming with his friends. It was a hot day on the beach, one of those days where you would rather stay in the water than go up on the sand. When they got to the beach, there were signs posted advising all swimmers to be aware of rip currents and to swim at your own risk. A big storm was coming in, so rip currents would pop up out of nowhere, and the waves were huge. Billy and his friends were enjoying the summer away from the swimming pool. They rather enjoyed the waves. It was a good way to test their skills with swimming, fighting the current and battling the waves to stay above them. If any of you know when there are swells over six feet, it is difficult to enjoy your day at the beach getting pounded wave after wave, but not them. They enjoyed the challenge. After a while, his friends were tired out and decided to lay on the beach blanket to get some sun. While Billy stayed in the water, he was starting to get fatigued, but that's the adrenaline rush that he enjoyed. He was hit wave after wave, and then the biggest wave of the day was coming. He could see it just past the two waves in front of him. Oh yeah. This was it. If he could overcome this wave, he would have felt accomplished for the day. He just jumped over the first two, and then came the big one. It barreled over top of him, pinning him to the sand and the rocks at the bottom. It took the wind out of him, too. He could feel himself being dragged on the ocean floor, but not toward the shore. Billy was actually being dragged away from the shore. For a split second, it didn't make any sense to him. Then, he realized the danger he was in. Billy was caught in a rip current. Billy struggled to get up off the sandy bottom like there was the weight of an elephant on top of him, dragging his face along the ground. He kept his lungs closed and fought and fought just to swim up for that dry air he longed for. Still, with all the effort he had, he could not break the pool from the current or the weight of the water above him. He turned and looked above him and saw the blue sky with the inching storm clouds rolling in like the sea. He turned behind him and looked into the dark depths of the ocean and saw what can only be described as the most terrifying rows of teeth you can ever imagine. 
They rotate it counterclockwise with row after row of serrated teeth circling one another, waiting for their meal. In this moment, Billy could see fish being sucked into the mouth of the beast. On either side of the mouth were two large scaly arms like a crocodile gripping the sandy bottom. He was about 16 feet from the mouth and moving rapidly towards it. At this point, the water would have been well over his head as he was very deep and far away from the shore. This had happened in almost an instant. Billy grabbed the muck underneath him and held on for dear life. There are worse things than drowning now, he realized. He clenched his fists and used all the strength he had left to stay put. He dragged a little further until he was just out of reach of the mouth. His feet were mere inches from the teeth of the beast. He came to a halt and dug into the muck, his feet lifting in the water towards the mouth. The sound of the water rushing by him mixed with the sound of teeth scraping one another was just behind him. He closed his eyes and prayed not to be swallowed by the monster. His lungs burned, wanting just one more breath of air. He felt he must have been underwater for almost two minutes and was running out of time. He opened his eyes and looked around for anything he could do. The sea, it turned to bright colors, colors everywhere. The gaping mouth was just behind him. His muscles ached, head began spinning, and then, as if his body took control, he opens his mouth and breathes in a rush of water. It burns, traveling down his throat, and he feels his lungs close up, banishing him from getting any air. His blood felt like lava, arms violently shook in the sand, losing the life-saving grip, and his eyes slowly succumbed to the darkness as the colors faded away. A few moments later, two of Billy's friends were grabbing his floating, lifeless body. They managed to ride some of the waves in back to shore, and when they got him on a beach blanket, began to perform CPR. He had no pulse. His lips were blue and his face was pale. His body spasmed a bit with what oxygen was left in his blood. By the time EMS arrived, the swimmers had collectively performed at least 30 cycles of CPR and rescue breathing, but to no avail. The storm had arrived at this point and was too dangerous to use electric shock in the rain. They put his lifeless body on a stretcher and moved him into the ambulance. They were not able to revive Billy, who, by this point, would be disabled forever anyway. The EMS stopped working on his body. Later on, at the 10 o'clock news, it was reported that a high school swimmer had drowned while being caught in a rip current, and for the swimmers at Cape Point to be aware of rip currents and to not go in the water when there is a risk of them. At that point in the summer, 13 people had succumbed to rip current deaths within the Cape Point area. Billy was lucky in a way. His body was the only one recovered out of the 32 drownings that year. Since then, drowning deaths have skyrocketed and city officials are baffled as to why.